Additive manufacturing is a technique that has been around for quite a while. There are two main areas in the field of dentistry in relation to 3D printing technologies. The first is printing of resins and waxes, and the second is the printing of metals. In order to understand basically how this technology works, this diagram here shows a very good representation. Here we have our 3D object. This is an STL file which we spoke about earlier and has a full representation of how that object appears. What the technology does then is it splits it up into layers. For example, if we were making this out of a photopolymer, this cup might have about 4,000 layers. Then what happens is each layer is printed and built on top of each other. So each layer is printed, added onto each other, and eventually, after some hours, will end up with a cup. Not the best way to make a cup, but a denture or a crown, that's a different matter. Photopolymer printing can be split into two main categories. The first is stereolithography, or SLA. What this sort of printer relies on is a vat of resin, as we can see here. And that resin is a photopolymer, so it's cured via UV light. What happens first is that our STL file is imported into the computer, and that splits it up into those layers we spoke about earlier. That layer of light is then shot from a laser onto a mirror, and that traces each of those layers across the photopolymer. We have the build plate, which then comes down, takes that layer off, goes up, down, and then the next layer is built on top of that. Depending on the speed of the printer, that can take up to 10 hours, depending on the, also the shape of the material. A DLP printer works differently to an SLA printer. This printer works more like an overhead projector. Unlike the SLA printer, which prints working on a tracing, the DL printer, DLP printer works as a projector. This means that each layer is printed as one, which leads to higher levels of accuracy and also a faster print. The next area of additive manufacturing is extrusion printing. A lot of people thought this is the first way that 3D printing was developed, but it actually wasn't. However, it does have its applications today. This type of printing basically uses a coil of material which then spools out, comes down and is heated, and then each layer is fused onto each other. A little bit like a hot glue gun, really. These printers are a lot quicker than the photopolymers. However, accuracy is sacrificed. Applications for these sorts of printers include some flexible dentures, models, and trays. However, commercially, these aren't used a great deal. Metal printing can also be categorized into two main areas in relation to dentistry. The first is selective laser melting. SLM, as it's also known, relies on an S tier file, as with photopolymers. But we see here that we have a, a laser focused, shot onto a mirror, and then we have a metal powder here. So it still shoots the same sort of layer of material, but instead of building from the bottom, it builds from the top first. There also needs to be a lot of metal support structures with this printing, and each layer of metal has to be rolled across so it's perfectly flat. This sort of printer is done in a noble gas, normally argon as well, to stop oxidization between the different layers. Electron beam melting works similarly as well. However, we don't have a mirror and we're using electron beams instead of a laser to create those different layers. It doesn't rely on as, as compact level of powder as well and accuracy between the two really depends on the type of equipment that's being used. 